guys, so today I'm going to show you eight powerful techniques when it comes to writing melodic and organic house in the style of artists such as Sebastian Legier, Ben Burma, Lay Nate and Lee Burridge, and from labels such as Anjuna Deep, All Day I Dream and This Never Happened. This is what you guys voted for in the YouTube poll last week, so thanks for taking part, and as usual you can download this project file, all the samples completely free for you to have a play with using the link below this video. If you want to get your music to a professional level as quickly as possible, check out my Accelerator program using the link below this video. We've helped some of our students get signed to labels such as Anjuna Deep and All Day I Dream, so if you do want to get signed on labels such as that and you're struggling to get that really finished professional sound, check out the link below. And without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so the first powerful technique is to write the chord progression first, and I'm going to show you some tips even if you don't know any music theory. Now with Melodic House and Organic House, the chord progressions tend to be a bit longer so they can develop over time. So let's just create a nice long chord progression. We're still only going to be using four chords, but that's absolutely fine. And what we're going to do is just use a normal piano sound so we don't get distracted by sound design at this point. When you've got your MIDI clip drawn in, you can actually choose a scale in most doors nowadays, which makes things way easier and this is why. You can just choose whichever scale that you want. Let's write this in D major. Press the scale button if you're using Ableton, and then it only shows notes from within that scale, so you can't really hit a wrong note. First, let's draw the bass line in, and then we can build the chords up from there. Now, a top tip if you don't know much music theory, it's easy to start chord progressions just using the root note of the track, which in this case is D because we're using the scale of D major. So you wouldn't think that a simple bass line like this could actually result in such a beautiful chord progression, but I'm going to show you how in a few seconds once we've listened through to this bass line. Okay, so now all we need to do once we're in scale mode is build the chords up by adding a note and skipping one each time. So if we skip this note, put one there, skip another note, put one there, and then we can go up to the octave if we want. So we're skipping two notes in this case, but we're going from D to D, so our first chord sounds like this. And let's turn it down a bit. And let's build out these other chords in exactly the same way. Already beautiful. But now we're going to make these chords a little bit more interesting and the way I'm going to do that is open up the scale so I can see what's going on. You can still see what notes are within the scale, but if we want to use any notes from without it to make it a bit more interesting we can. Let's program in a melody over the top of this. And we could actually have it still in scale mode. You can see I'm just using these notes from within the scale, still. Okay, so now we've built out the chords just using that scale template technique. Now let's move on to powerful technique number two, which is creating a beautiful, rich sound bed. Now this is very popular in this style of music, and the way that we do that is create an auxiliary channel. Here we've got a reverb set up with quite a long decay time, maybe five to six seconds. We're boosting up the volume a tiny bit just because the Ableton stock reverb tends to sound quite quiet. 100% wet for the reverb because it's an auxiliary channel, we don't want the dry signal being doubled up. And then we're just taking out the low end with an EQ as well. So let's feed some of these chords into this sound bed reverb, which we're going to use, and several elements are going to get fed into this too. I've actually extended the decay time to be about 9.8 seconds, so it really is a long reverb. But it already sounds really lovely and rich, so we're going to be referring back to this sound bed several times today. Let's go on to number three, and this is really important too. This is transient control, and this can really change the vibe of a whole track, especially when it comes to the drums. So let's get a kick drum in there first. I'm just going to choose a suitable kick drum. Go to my favorites and and use Will's Melodic House Kick. 
It's a bit of a softer kick sound, and let's just program this in on every beat. So I've programmed in a kick on every beat. Time for a sip of coffee. And now let's look at the difference that the transients make. So if we go to the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, which you can download below this video, and go to Hi-Hats, and choose a Hi-Hat, and we'll drag this into our drum channel. If we program a hi-hat in, in between every kick, we've got the standard effect. But what we want to do is control the transient on this and make it a bit more of a shaker sound, so it's going shh instead of tch. And that is going to change the whole vibe of this track. So let's just add this fade in, which is like an attack. So it instantly softens the vibe of the whole thing. In fact, with the chords, I'm going to turn down the velocity of all of these notes, which will take out some high end. A bit softer, again, very important. So let's get the claps in there as well. And again, I'm gonna show you how transients matter. So if we bring in a clap that's got pre-transients, which sounds like, and you can see here, it sounds like several people clapping at once. We can choose where this sample starts to fit the groove of the track, and it's all about the transients. So let's program in the clap on every other kick, which is exactly where you'd expect a clap to be in a house track of any house genre. And then let's play with these transients. So that sounds a little bit out of time. So let's just pull the sample start over a little bit. I quite like that, really short and delicate, which is what we want for this genre. I'm gonna save this actually. Let's call this melodic housemanship. Good melodic housemanship, that man. If you're enjoying this so far, let me know in the comments below. Give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother, if you're feeling holy. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you can download all of these uh, samples and presets completely free below this video as well. Okay, let's go on to the next thing, which is really important, syncopation. So there are relatively few elements in these genres of music, but it's through careful use of this sound bed and groove control by using tools such as syncopation, which keeps that groove moving, makes it interesting. So we're gonna do this with a piano sound as well, uh, just to keep things in interesting. So let's call this piano sync, and I'm gonna color this blue and just get another grand piano sound on there. And all that we are going to do is choose three notes from within that scale. So the scale is D major, and we're going to put them on the 16ths. Just three notes in a row, and this is the clever bit. If you select just those three notes, so don't select four 16ths by mistake, and then just duplicate, you'll see it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And if you roll that out, then you've created a really cool syncopated rhythm which is gonna be playing a regular rhythm, like this. But now listen what happens when we get the 4-4 kick in. It just creates a really nice groove. I'm gonna take these chords and put them down an octave. That's better. Now, in terms of transient energy, again, we're harking back to that. We could actually put a reverb directly on this syncopated piano, which is gonna really push it back in the mix and take out all that initial attack energy. So this is about the only situation in which I use reverb on the channel itself. Usually I would use auxiliary channels. It creates a really nice washed out effect. Beautiful. Okay, on to the next powerful technique, which is using interplaying motifs. Now that sounds a bit complex, but if we create another channel here and we just call this 
grass pluck. I'm going to create this from scratch so you can see how I do it. And then we're going to create another polyrhythm that just plays in between and dances with that syncopated piano. And this again is a really important trick when it comes to these styles of music. So I'm going to use Serum for this. And I'm just going to build a simple, what's that piano doing? And then I'm going to build a simple pluck from scratch. Um, but first I'm going to just program in the riff that I want. So let's create another MIDI clip, D major. And you can see I'm just using the uh, notes from within the scale again. On sixteenths, as in the length of the note is a sixteenth of a bar, that's why it's called a sixteenth. And all we're going to do with this riff is repeat it every two kicks. You can hear how that interplays with the piano sync, the syncopated piano. Just keeps that groove really going. So let's make this into a brass pluck now. I'll take it down an octave, I think that's a bit high. And I'll just show you how quickly you can create a melodic house or organic house sounding pluck. So we're starting off with a normal saw wave. Then what we're going to do is add a little bit of attack. So you can see instead of hitting it straight away, it's actually fading that sound in. Almost sounds reversed. Let's add some release. So it takes a while to fade out. And then we're going to add a filter envelope as well. So we're just going to turn on the filter, choose a low pass filter, then open up a second envelope, and then drag that to the cutoff, turn it down a bit. And again, we want to create this kind of slope effect. So now it sounds like a brass sound. Let's add some more release. Beautiful. Now, what we're going to do is add some richness to this by creating some unison, which is going to double up that wave well, eight times and then add some detune. And again, it's pushing it back in the mix a bit. So if we play everything together, what you're going to hear is this brass plug actually sounds like it's slightly behind everything else, and we need to account for that, and I'll show you how to do that too. See, it sounds out of time. So if you press this button in Ableton, this D button, you can actually pull back the milliseconds on this channel alone, and it's going to play it 100 milliseconds before all the other elements now because I've programmed that in. That sounds about right. So this is where it was. You can hear it sounds like it's behind the kick. And now it's pulled it back to account for this attack that I've added to the sound. So powerful technique is adding movement and warmth to this track and there are a few tips at our disposal. We have got LFOs which are low frequency oscillators, we've got distortion and we've got side chain compression and we've got automation as well. So let's look at all of these quickly in order. So the first of which is the LFOs. Now to give an example of those I'm just going to double up these chords, just duplicate them and I'm going to create an organ sound and we're going to just get rid of the melodic notes here and just use the chords themselves like this and that should be all good because we don't want to overcomplicate this we just want this one playing the chords and again let's create an organ sound from scratch and I'm going to show you how you can use LFOs to create warmth and some distortion as well so now we have our chords which sound something like this pretty good but they're a bit harsh 
So let's add some unison again, just to, to make them sound a bit richer. Add some filter, take out the high end. And now what we're going to do is add some LFO to that filter and just add a little bit of movement, which is going to create an organic feel, which is very important with melodic house and unsurprisingly organic house. So we're going to detach the LFO from the BPM, just so it's an arbitrary Hertz amount. Drag that LFO onto the cutoff of the filter. And we want this to be a subtle effect. So just a little bit of movement in there. And now if we add some distortion as well, it's just going to warm up this sound nicely. Maybe it needs to go up so it doesn't, won't clash with the bass when we create it. No, we'll keep it down. But we need to make sure we take out some of the low frequencies afterwards so when we write our bass in, which is very soon, it's not going to clash. So I'm going to take everything out under about 150 hertz. And now we can feed this into our sound bed track as well. and the brass pluck too. So with the sound bed track off, it's like that. And with that big reverb on, beautiful. Let's make sure the low end is under control in the reverb, so it doesn't get too muddy. That sounds a bit better. Okay, on to the next tip for movement and interest, and that is sidechain compression. Now to do that, in Ableton at least, all you need to do is bring a normal compressor, put it over the thing that you want to sidechain compress. So in this instance, we'll do it over the piano. Open up this little button here, and then take your sidechain input after pressing this button. I personally create a separate sidechain channel, this SC channel here, and it's just a short, sharp tick programmed in and then in the routing, I send it to sends only instead of master. So you never actually hear it. It's just being used to trigger the sidechain compressor. And that's because you get more control if you have a short, sharp tick and then control the length of that ducking effect just with the attack and the release here. And what this is going to do is allow the kick to pop through the mix a bit. So let's put the kick on and the chords. Now watch what happens and listen to when I take down the threshold. If I turn off the kick, you'll hear what's happening. Now these chords are having more movement and interest added to them because they are being ducked by this sidechain compressor or pump compressor because it's doing a pumping effect. So we can just copy and paste that onto a few of the elements. And the ratio will determine how much the ducking actually occurs. Okay, the last thing I want to add some extra movement and interest to is on the drums. Now, if we go into the drums and we program in a closed hat, which is going to give the extra groove to the track, we just choose a closed hat, program it in on every 16th, like so. Let's just duplicate those. At the moment, we have this kind of groove. But now listen to what happens when we put one of these sidechain compressors after this closed hat.
So that's off. And that's on. It just bounces those hats as well, which creates more movement and interest. We are now going to add some more movement and interest to this brass pluck, and we are going to do that by using a delay. We're just going to put a simple delay on the channel before the pump compressor, turn the, turn the feedback down, and then just have a ping pong delay, which is going to help it bounce left and right. Nice. Okay, the last tip for movement and interest I'm going to show you is automation. So we've got this lovely cutoff control with our brass plucks. Let's automate it. So you can just press this button here if you're using Ableton, press configure, choose the parameter you wish to automate, and then it's going to show up down here like this. And then you can right click, show automation, and then you can add some movement to the track like so. And it's going to open up that filter over time. Like so. Okay, on to the next, which is the simple bass. Now with music like this, there's usually either a staccato rhythmic bass or there's sustained bass that just kind of goes over time. But we're gonna create a simple bass that again interplays with these other elements. So I'm gonna create this from scratch just using a sine wave. So I will use Serum because we're already using it anyway. And we are going to just choose a sine wave rather than the saw wave, which is the default patch. So I'll go to basic shapes and then we've got a sine wave. Now let's just program this in on the root note of the track, which is a D, because remember we're working in a D minor or D major, sorry. And I'm going to program it up a couple of octaves up because it's easier to hear. And again, this is just using sixteenths. That's where all the groove happens. And then we are going to just take this and copy it down. to there, I think. Let's just copy it on every bar. So simple. Now the last thing I'm gonna do with this is tweak the actual shape of the bass note so it doesn't cut off so quickly. Let's turn it to mono because it's a bass line and we don't want bass notes overriding each other. And then we'll solo it and just add a little bit of release. Just softens it up a bit. And we're going to add a sub oscillator as well, which is just going to add another sine wave an octave below. And this is going to give us some real nice low end warmth. So with it off and with it on. And now all we need to do is add a pump compressor to it as well. So it's going to bounce in time with the kick. But there's this horrible clicking sound that I'm going to take out in the top end like this. Some of 
that piano syn syncopated piano to the sound bed. Now, if you add that to several elements, you get a lot of movement in the track. So my final and eighth powerful technique for these genres is adding some ear candy. Once you've got the main track written like this, adding little bits of ear candy here and there can really help bring out the, um, the kind of special source in a track. So let's create a synth that we're just gonna add in the top end. And we're just gonna use another serum. And we could just play a note every now and again that's going to just bring out this and create something a bit special. So if we duplicate that so it can run through a couple of times. And then just using a normal sine wave, let's make it a bit richer. And a normal saw wave, I mean. Add some release. And again, we can push this right back in the mix. All about the transient energy, remember that? So it creates a lovely soft sound now. Living this. <laughs> Badly, but adding these little bits now and again throughout the track that just perhaps crop up once or twice is really going to add some special source to your melodic house and your organic house too. Well, I'm going to do a little bit more work on this, do a tiny bit of mixing, just get the levels sounding a bit better before I give it to you to download. But I hope you've enjoyed this and found it very useful. If you did like it, please smash like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. If you want to get your music to a professional level as quickly as possible, check out my accelerator program using the link below this video. And thanks again for watching. Until next time, cheers and happy producing. Thank you.